Hey, Long Grain's been here for 13 years now. I think we'll probably be here for another 13 if um, we don't all go mad. So Long Grain's situated in, uh, in Surrey Hills, which is just on the fringe of the city in Sydney. Lots of streets with housing and, and also a great deal of restaurants, bars, lots of pubs, lots of things to do. So you can really make a night of hanging out in Surrey Hills and having a bit of a crawl around the various venues. We actually won Best New Restaurant in uh, 2000. That was for the, uh, the Sydney Morning Herald Good Food Guide. And yeah, we've, we've either had two or one chef's hats for the last 13 years as well. In, in the restaurant, we sit about 150 people now. We serve our interpretation of Thai food, which uses the best of just beautiful, fresh Australian ingredients, but with a Thai focus. And the real signature dishes here are the beetle leaves, the egg net, and the caramelised pork hock. So those three dishes have been on the menu since, you know, August 99. And I hate to think how many of those we've sold over the years. Uh, they're still our most popular dishes. We recently expanded into the downstairs, so we put a little lunchtime canteen down there called Short Grain. That's open Monday to Friday. And we've also got a great big bar down there that also does bar food. There's DJs four nights a week, and that's going really well for us, actually. A restaurant can be a bit more serious, but I think bars need to be fun, the music needs to be loud, make, make a bit of a night of it. Yeah, fun more than anything with great drinks. Yeah, so we've, we've partnered with Bacardi on uh, Sensology cocktail classes. They're held on the first Saturday of every month traditionally, or if a group wants to have a special session for themselves, then we'll do that at any time the bar's not open, really. You learn the art of cocktail craft uh, more than anything, so you learn the proper way to make drinks. Very popular. Uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of different stick drinks that we serve. Obviously the traditional Caperunia, Caprioska, the beautiful mojito, and then our own takes things like the ping pong, the rose porteous, the red dragon, things like that. There's a few tales around about the mojito. I'm led to believe it was made in a, originally made in a bar in Cuba, apparently with Bacardi. We're going to get Jordan to make one. I'm a bit, a bit rusty behind the bar these days. I'm going to start off by making a mojito, which is a traditional Cuban drink. Okay, so I've just got half a lime and then two heaped teaspoons or bar spoons of caster sugar. What are you going to do with that, Jordan? I'm just going to muddle these two together, just so the sugar kind of almost infuses a little bit with the lime juice and the oils out of the lime. Beautiful. So Jordan's going to put some mint now into the mojito. Okay, so big, nice clap. One, two, three. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Beautiful. Clapping, it just releases all the oils and the natural aromatics that are inside the mint. Now the rum, the main ingredient. So keeping with the authenticity of this drink, we've chosen to use the Bacardi Superior. It was made in the original mojitos. If you don't have a jigger or a nip pourer, just measure it out at home with a measuring cup or guess and make sure that there's a nice little balance. There's nothing worse than a drink that's too strong, is there? That's not balanced and you just... Exactly. So if you want to add some more rum, just make sure you add some more of everything else as well. Okay, so we'll just add some crushed ice, just so that we can give everything a bit of a stir. Apparently pirates used to drink mojitos back in the day. You just see a few pirates just hanging there going, ah, having a mojito. <laughs> and then topped with a dash of swept soda water. And every good drink needs a nice garnish. So just a nice mint sprig and a couple of straws. Beautiful. Perfect. That looks delicious. This drink originated here about 12 or 13 years ago, uh, well before your time, Jordan. A couple of years. You were probably still in short pants back then. I was a little, about 13 years old. <laughs> Consists of some lychees, which look awfully like ping pong balls. Some passion fruit, uh, probably the pulp of one passion fruit, I'd say, Jordan's got there. What else is going to put in there today? Uh, we're going to put the wedge, uh, a wedge of lime, and then dump the whole lime in there as well. And then about half a bar spoon of caster sugar, just to add a little bit of sweetness. And then we're just going to give it a little bit of a press. Okay, we've got some 42 Below Vodka that we've infused ourselves and we just leave it to sit for two or three days. You get an amazing coloured vodka and the, the flavour of the lemon is really true once it's infused. So about 45 mils of the lemon vodka and then 15 mils of lychee liqueur. Everyone loves it. We often see, uh, you know, 
big tables of burly blokes ordering eight, eight ping pongs. I think the joke behind the ping pong and being in a Thai restaurant is probably why they order it. I've seen this drink on uh, cocktail lists in Bangkok, the Greek islands, and I've also seen it on a cocktail list in New York. So it's travelled long and far, this, um, this drink. Then a hard tap. Don't ever bang it on anything hard or you'll break the glass. And then just gently pour it out. Then we serve it with a little fork. So then once people have finished drinking the drink, they can pick away at the lychees. And then a couple of fun straws just to jazz it up a little bit.